Hello everybody and welcome to week one of the University of North Dakota Dynasty here in NCAA 13. We are opening up against Minnesota in the Twin Cities. They're brand, well, not brand new, but fairly new stadium, TCF Bank Stadium. It is a beautiful stadium. I've been there and it is very nice. And we're going to look to kick off our start into the FBS against the Big Ten program and the well, a regional rival. It's a pretty good rivalry, and we're hoping to continue that into football. And there's Greg Harden on the kick return. He's a speed demon, but he couldn't quite bust it there. So we'll start off a little handoff to Jake Miller out of the shotgun. A couple yards on that one. Not a whole lot going on, but our starting quarterback, Marcus Hendrickson, the senior, makes a beautiful throw. How did he fit that in there to R.J. McGill, number five? An undersized, but... Very quick little receiver. He's a nice little target to have there, and he makes a great catch after a great throw. And then Hendrickson finds Harden. Harden had it over the top. He was going to bust it, and he drops it. And unfortunately, it's going to end just like that. The drive stalls, and Harden had that ball and just couldn't hold on. And then Marquise Gray, the dual threat quarterback, a guy we got to watch in this game, third and 17 after the sack. And the man, oh man, the tight end had the coverage beat there. And, well, just a little bit too much air under that ball allows us to stop them. And so now a little nine yard gain is going to set up second and one. And Jake Miller right out of the shotgun there. He's very good out of the shotgun set. So we go five wide. I'll little wide receiver screen to Greg Harden he's gonna go and he's gonna hit, set us up right there just outside the 10 yard line there as you can see the yellow line basically at the half yard line so we're basically working with a goal line situation it would stall and we would just settle for a field goal by Zeb Miller 26 yards so it's a 3 nothing lead on the road Big Ten competition but then they're going to use their speed, and they do have a, quite a bit more speed and a little bit more size than we do. And it's going to take some time here, but Gillum is going to go. He's going to bust some tackles, shake some defenders off. For four, he's finally brought down, and now they're inside the 20-yard line threatening to score. It's Danielle Kirkwood, the backup halfback, actually getting some action as well. They like to run the ball, pound it right down your throat. And there's that dancing gopher. It's so ugly. But uh, here we go. Gillum is going to run, and he is going to outrun all the defenders who were committed to the left side of the field. And, uh, well, they got caught on the misdirection. So 7-3 Minnesota. In the late half of this first quarter, Jake Miller with a weird little reception there for about four yards. Third and five, Henderson looking, Hendrickson, I should say, looking to throw. Finds Seth Wisthoff, the tight end, but he can't quite get past the first down marker, so it's another failed drive for the Fighting Sioux. And oh, the very next play, they are going to burn us, and that is Goodger, tight end there. And uh, that's kind of when you know you need to up your, your talent levels here. And our next drive would just three and out, busted, and uh, now Gillum's going to go for a nice 11-yard gain. Like it's just another day at the office for him. And Marquise Gray showing his wheels. Again, a dual threat. We need to watch out for him taking off at all times. But we would stop Danelle Kirkwood, and they've got some very solid wheels on this team. And, and Kirkwood and Gillum and... Gray, they've just they've got a good running game and we had a hard time stopping it in this particular part of the game as they're just running, running, running and we can't do anything about it. But luckily we got a stop there, second and goal, we're stacking the goal line and Kirkwood would be stopped short of a touchdown there. So third and goal, they go back to pass and luckily the pressure Gets in Marquise Gray's face enough to make him make a bad pass. Awkward angle field goal, but it's going to go through. So it's a 14-point game. We held them to a field goal at least. So Hendrickson, 15 seconds left, third and 13.
19. We're just going to take a shot down the field with Greg Harden. Good coverage. Two seconds left on the clock. They're going to take one last shot at the end zone with the Hail Mary. Ray looks all the way, and he is going to find his man. I don't understand how this happened. This is what happens when you leave two seconds on the clock at the end of a half. And, uh, yeah, that's killer to go into the half down by three touchdowns now instead of two. So we go into the second half running a little option, but we stuff that one gray stop for a two-yard loss. Our defense needs to come up with a turnover, and instead, here we go, gray's going to take off again. It's about 14 yards on that play, second and three. Now here we go. Danell Kirkwood stopped by Devin Benjamin, the inside lineman there, and he's a pretty, pretty tough guy. We would hold them on that drive, and so now we're going to run a little trickeration out of the Wildcat, and just not enough time for Mitch Sutton, the backup halfback, to get a pass out to the other halfback, Jake Miller. But uh, Marcus Hend Hendrickson rolling out, and R.J. McGill goes for the diving catch, and it's just not enough. And here's Goodger again. This guy, go-to target for Marquise Gray here. And going to find Jones, the, the guy who made the great catch at the end of the half to make that touchdown happen. Danell Kirkwood is now in the game permanently as the starter because Gillum was, in fact, injured earlier in the second quarter, actually, so they would be running with their back on halfback, but it doesn't seem to matter when Marquise Gray just finds a way into the end zone with his feet now. He has a passing and rushing touchdown to account for on the day, and so we're trying to get some kind of offense going, and somehow Seth Wistoff comes up with the catch, but again, he is short, but it's third and two, and just a Poor choice by Hendrickson, not a good throw. And uh, now we jump ahead to our next drive after our defense came up with a stop finally. Hendrickson just not on his game right now. Where is he throwing these balls? And now he's getting sacked. What is going on? Our offense can't produce anything in this game. And our defense now just missing tackles. Here in the fourth quarter now, 31-3 to is the score, and Kirkwood's going to blast his way for about an 11-12 yard gain there, and now Gray stuffed on third down. We actually hold him to zero points again, and we're going to run in the Wildcat again. This time Mitch Sutton comes around on the jet sweep for about 11 yards. Finally something positive to work with. Hendrickson rolls out when he doesn't need to, and who is it again? Mitch Sutton. Give it to this guy, I guess. He's just producing plays all over the place but on third down Hendrickson throws it to nobody intended for Seth Westhoff who was actually wide open but uh, couldn't find him so fourth and three we're just going to go for it because at this point why does it matter and Greg Harden was the intended target although I don't know where he was going he like turned around when he should have been going for the ball and then Danell Kirkwood here he goes he's going to bust off over 50 yards on this game, almost busted a touchdown here and now with just over a minute to go. Kirkwood will punch it in. And that's just pretty much adding salt to the wounds. The final Minnesota 38, North Dakota 3, we got thrashed in this game. And uh, they're just a higher level team and we got to be a little bit more prepared. There you can see horrible stats. We ran a couple trick plays with Sutton, so that's why he has passing stats. But 8 of 23, 76 yards, 2 sacks, horrible rushing yards. Miller, 9, rushes 11 yards. Of course, with bad passing numbers, you're going to get bad receiving numbers, so nothing really stand out there. Our defense sure got a lot of playing time, though. So, uh, yeah, pretty much an expected result. There you can see Gray, 7 of 13, 185 yards, two touchdowns, plus a rushing touchdown. But uh, pretty much the expected result, Kirkwood, a ridiculous day, 173 yards, <laughs> long of 52, obviously, there at the end. Um, rough day for our defense. 
but uh, we're going to look forward, and we've, we've got some teams that are beatable. Uh, Minnesota kind of Big Ten, they're on that up higher level. We're looking, as we go into our next game, we'll be playing against Hawaii on the road, and that's our first conference game, which I think we may have a better chance at winning uh, because their defense does not look good at all, although our defense looked pretty terrible in this game, so I'm not, I shouldn't be one to talk, I guess. But there, we did not even have 100 yards of total offense, only five first downs. The only thing was there was no turnovers in this game, which was rather interesting, but seven punts, that is disgusting. And here you'll see our needs uh, that we're going to need to fill with recruiting, uh, quarterback, tight end, and center on offense. Um, and I'll be showing some recruiting here, uh, middle linebacker, strong safety on defense, and then a punter for special teams. And so here we go. We'll take a look at a few of the recruits that I am looking at, and uh, they're not the best. We're going to have a very hard time recruiting with the stats that we have. We don't have a lot of good pitches to these recruits, so even getting a three-star is going to be kind of difficult. So we're going to be really kind of scraping to get these recruits, but David Thompson looks like a pretty good athlete. C.J. Covington, a three-star strong safety, looks promising out of Apple Valley, Minnesota, which I have been there, by the way. Andrew Dorch, a middle linebacker, he is kind of a stretch, though. He's got a lot of interests above us, but Alfonso Andrews, I like this tight end out of New Mexico. He looks good. Scott Bryant, 6'4", 232, pretty solid tight end right there, so we'll look at him as well. But uh, here's our Heisman watch, Matt Barkley out of USC. Monte Ball out of Wisconsin, Eric Reed, a free safety out of LSU, Denard Robinson, quarterback out of Michigan, and finally Landry Jones, quarterback out of Oklahoma. That's your Heisman watch. We'll look at the players of the week. You can check that out, and uh, we will be taking on Hawaii, the Warriors, Aloha. There's the Mountain West players of the week. But uh, I'll see you all next time when we take on Hawaii.